Hello everyone and welcome to Dive's Tech Tips. Today we're going to do a very quick video to show you how to get up and running with the new Canvas Power App Model Dialog component. So this is the short version of the video and it's going to show you how to install it and then uh, other videos uh, will be dealing with uh, the component in a lot more details. So um, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and let's get started. First, we need to go to the aka.ms forward slash power apps dash pop up site. And uh, if you scroll down, I'd assume that the reason why you're watching this video is because you don't like reading. Um, so you went for the video option. I'm very happy with that. I'm very, very much the same. So if you scroll down right to the bottom, you'll see that there is a thumbnail, which is not going to help you at all. Uh, then you'll see that there is a Canvas Power App Model Dialog V08. So this is still in public preview. So I'm sure by the time that you watch this, uh, the, the versions might have increased already. But just go ahead and download this to your machine. And then we can import that into Power Apps. Next, let's open up a Power App environment. And this is then the environment where you want to import the component into. So to do that, I'm going to select Import Canvas App. I'm going to select the package that I've just downloaded and then make sure that it's set to create as new. We don't want to update existing apps at this stage and then we can go and say import. And when the import is successful, you can go back into the apps navigation on the left hand side and then you'll see there is the, the app that actually houses the, the component. So we've built an app that you can very easily go and test the component with. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But now we're going to create a brand new app. And I want to show you how easy it is to import this into a new app um, and then to start making use of that functionality. So I'm going to create a new tablet app. Doesn't matter, you can use a phone app as well. It'll work on both. But for this, I'm just going to use a tablet layout. So this is my brand new app. I'm going to go into components, click on the ellipsis, and then click on import components. It's then going to show me all of the applications or um, component libraries in the environment that has that's been set up. So for this, we're just going to import it directly from that app that we've just downloaded. And you'll see that it asks you for the Office 365 users to authorize that. And you need to do that because the component has a people picker in it. Um, it needs to be able to use that connection. Okay, so there is the app imported. Um, you'll see as time goes by, there's still some documentation that we actually want to do um, in the component as well. So these blocks over here will be used, utilized for that. Uh, but for now, all we're going to do is expand the component and then copy the dialogue response trigger and the pop-up instruction button or the example pop-up instruction button. Let's go and copy that into the main app. Just make that a little bit smaller again. Just going to put them in here. doesn't really matter where you put them right now, just to test it. And then um, we also need to insert the component onto the screens where we need it. So to do that, we'll go to Insert, Custom, and then select the component from the list. All right, so there it sits. It's uh, not correctly spaced at the moment, so all that we have to go and do, make sure that the component is selected. Then you can go to Height, and then just change that to parent dot height and then you can do the same for width to so just change that to parent dot width then the only thing that's left for us to do is to go back into the aka.ms forward slash power apps dash pop up site and go and copy the visible formula so you'll see that the component so we need to tell the component when it should show up and when it shouldn't so just copy that formula from step 11 and then go back into your Power App and then change the visible setting for or the visible property for the component itself. All right, so there it is. And uh, we just need to restart this app now because this trigger that we've copied just need to register and all of these sort of things. So we're going to go and just save this app and then restart it. So let's call this uh, demo app. And close it 
and then just go and open it up again. So the only other thing that we want to go and do in this app before we test it is to go and enable the toggle. So you'll see if we go into the default property, that is currently set to false. And all that we want to do is copy this short little formula over there, replace the false and then paste it in there. And that's, uh, that's just to prevent um, or to enable the toggle because we have it on false by default so that it doesn't trigger by accident or in unwanted environments. Okay, so now we're ready to go and test our pop-up. To do that, we're going to preview the app, smash the button, and there you go. That's a pop-up in five minutes. So you've got our icon at the top, basic instruction or basic message, an OK button, and then a link button, which is optional. So if I click on OK, it's going to make it go away. And now we can go and check out the anatomy of this button. So all of this is covered in great detail in the documentation you can find at aka.ms forward slash power apps dash pop up or in the power app that we downloaded earlier that contains the component all of the different combinations of pop ups that you could generate but for now I just want to quickly show you these properties and uh, in the in the short video uh, but if you wanted to deep dive you can go and have a look at those so over here we've got the dialogue instructions collection and this is the collection that the pop up listens to so then we drop records into that collection and that tells the pop-up how to respond and how to behave. So the top property is type and at the moment it's set to OK and that's why we're only getting an OK pop-up. Other options for this could have been a yes, no or a yes, no cancel and uh, that's going to give us the additional uh, buttons. The input type we're not going to discuss in too much detail right now. Uh, this is going to be covered in other videos or in the documentation where you can actually now get information back from the user and then use the toggle in order to perform certain actions with that information. Here we've got a message and this is simply the message that pops up onto the screen. The source is the is used for track and trace purposes and it's very useful for things like application insights or troubleshooting or debugging um, where you could track what requested this pop-up right through from the to the response that we get back from it. Then we've got an icon type um, and that's simply the icon that's displayed at the top of the, the pop-up. If you want to go and change that you could by just adding, so that's an add document. A color, icon color, um, this is the X value although you can simply use the name to say color blue. Um, the input section we're not going to discuss at this stage. Essentially this is goes together with the input type when, uh, when you set the type to input and then specify the input type you have to specify a configuration for that input type in this section but we're not going to look at that in detail right now. Then lastly we've got the link information and this is what is displayed at the bottom of the pop-up and it's optional so you don't have to specify a link but it's hugely helpful especially if the pop-up uh, discusses a business rule or a policy you could very easily have a link to a SharePoint policy um, in this in this pop-up or a, a help video even in stream that'll take the user directly to a video that discusses the specific issue that this pop-up is dealing with. Right at the bottom we've got the response section and that again is used for when you get information back from the pop-up so we're not going to cover this in this video. So that's a, a pop-up in five minutes. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much for all of your support on the pop-up. Um, the, the support has been phenomenal and we, we're really enjoying the feedback and the suggestions and we are sure to prioritize these and build it into future releases of this component so that anybody and everybody in the community could benefit from this and that's, that's really the aim for, for doing this. So thank you very much for watching and uh, please tell your friends and colleagues about the component and about this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.